welcome to Heavy Montreal. Thanks, Hank. Good to be Thank here. You. Yeah, so so let's talk about the formation of this band because you were in Three Days Grace, you were in, of course, Stained. But talk to me about coming together and the expectations of like a super group. There was none of that. Right. I mean, it was really just, you know, um, we were friends. Stain was on a break. Aaron's doing a country, pursuing a country career. Right. And I was actually just kind of writing with some different singers and I had called Adam. I was playing with Jason Newstead at the time. Yep. We actually played Toronto. And I said, I'm going to be there a couple of days off. You want to hang out? So we did. And that's what really kind of led was the start of this. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? We got together, worked on some music, and it, out of everything I had done, it just felt really natural, went really, really well. And uh, ultimately, that's what led to this kind of happening. It was really cool because Mike had a lot of great music, a lot of great right. ideas. So it was very easy for me to, you know, um, you know, come up with ideas or you know, melodies and all that sort of stuff. So the songwriting from the very beginning was really sort of easy, not easy, but seamless, you know? So. Did the project start off as a one-off, let's say it's got some guys together and jam, or was it like, let's make this a band right from the get-go? I think it, we didn't really consider it to be a band until, um, I guess maybe until we decided to get in the studio. We and, do the demo, I think, yeah. and everybody heard it, and everybody's like, wow, this is, they really liked it. You know, mm -hmm. in between, you know, the label and management and other people that, you know, were kind of involved, got pretty excited about it. And that's when it was like, oh, okay, you know, let's make a record. Right. You know, and I mean, it kind of started off with Adam and myself, and he had known Rich, and we all knew Corey, but I was really good friends with Corey. He was kind of the first guy I thought of calling, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that's, that's kind of all came together. So the first album came out a while back. Where are we in terms of getting to the next new album? We're working on it uh, slowly. You know, we have no real uh, date or timeline. Um, you know, per se, but uh, we're working on songs now. The songs are going back and forth and the ideas, and, yeah. you know, trying to, you know what I mean, kind of form what it's going to be. Yeah. Figuring out what's, you know, what well, everybody's into. Uh -huh. And let's talk about that, because you have obviously a fan base with Three Days Grace, and you had a fan base with Stain. Do you have to sort of play to those fan bases and say, we need to make a song that sounds like this, or is it really, let's just do what feels yeah. right? I think, yeah, I mean, it's, na I think it's more so than anything, it's very natural. Yeah. Uh, the songwriting process is pretty natural. Uh, you know, you when you're writing, I, I think you have a certain style that right. you write just because that's what you write. So, um, yeah, the songwriting for me, I mean, it's not it's not so much about thinking about writing a song. It's gonna sound like anything. It's just kind of writing what comes to mind and what's natural. You know, and what is natural is what you know what we wrote before with our other bands and and what we're writing now. Uh, I'm like, let me ask you about Stain. Oh, here come the ducks. Yeah, yeah, like, come yeah. Isn't that great? That, yeah, that, that's yeah, really cool. heavy mantra. Look, he's stretching. He's <laughs> stretching. Yeah, that's um, great. You, of course, uh, Stain is on its second hiatus. Is that, are we on a second one? <laughs> or, or, or I is don't it, know. Or, sure. is it, or is it a permanent one? I don't know what it, I mean, listen, you know, uh, I mean, I look back to, I mean, I remember 09, we stopped touring. Right. And we did a record after that. We did the, the self-titled Stain record, which we did a little touring on. It was one of my favorite Stain records we had done. Right. And, uh, you know, Aaron, I know, has another country record coming out in September. You know, so, um, I mean, there's, there's, you know, we say we're going to do something else, but there's no, again, there's no real plan for it right now. You know what I mean? I know he's pursuing that, and I know we're writing another record, so. Is it is it frustrating, though, to have built up such a brand and then sort of just loaded? Honestly, or should I be no, honestly. politically correct? No, I mean, honestly. listen, it, it was a little frustrating, right. you know what I mean? But, listen. And people come to me, they're like, oh, you know, uh, doesn't get mad, don't you angry? And I'm like, well, I can't be. He has to be happy with what he wants to do. Right. Like Adam and what he had, he has to be happy. And if they're not happy, I, no matter what I do when I go to Aaron and I can't call him, say, dude, we have all these offers, we got to play these shows, and I can't make them. And if I did make them, he'd resent me. Right. And they wouldn't be fun and they wouldn't be what they're supposed to be. Uh -huh. So when the day comes that he decides, hey, man, let's do this again. Either I'll be ready or I won't. Right. You know what I mean? It's either, no man, I'm doing this now because you had your thing, or you know we'll be on a break or whatever it is, and I'll say, okay, we can do it. You know what I mean? So I'm really just kind of playing it as it goes. Right, so when you're, you know? when you're with this band, you don't approach it as, well, we'll just do this until he comes back. You're actually like, we're gonna build this. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is something that we, you know, that we started and I'm, I'm very proud of. Yeah, and it's sounding great. Now, let me ask you a little bit about Three Days Grace. Mm. Obviously, you're not with the band. Is that also sort of disappointing that you build this thing up and then you have to sort of step out and start again? Um, I mean, not disappointing. No, no. I mean, definitely, it's a that 
you know, massive part of my life. And, you know, if it wasn't for that band, I wouldn't have the opportunity to right. do this or do anything, you know, do what I love to do. So, um, it's different, you know, it's definitely different, but it was something I had to do. I mean, make, making the choice to, to move on and, um, you know, it was the best decision I, I could have made. I was in a, you know, I was in a really an unhealthy spot and, and not, you know, not physically, but, you know, spiritually and emotionally, I was just in a, in a, a, a bad spot, a negative right. place. And, um, I think a lot of it stemmed from, you know, being in that band. So, uh, yeah, I had to change, I had to change that for myself, for my own well being, And, uh, it's different and it's refreshing and it's exciting now to be sort of, you know, rebuilding another project or, you know, working on this band and trying to build it build from it. the ground up. It's, you know, it's, it's more fun than anything, you know? So, so are you now spiritually in a good place? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's been, you know, it's been a few years now and uh, I got remarried and, you know, started a new band. And um, So you really changed, like, everything? Everything in my life I had, I, I had to, I, I pulled a full 180, I had to change everything. And I did, and um, I'm in a really, really great place. And uh, I'm really thankful that I am. You know, I, I don't think a lot of people get second chances, and uh, I feel like I did, and I'm very lucky to... To yeah. have gotten that, yeah. So, so let's talk about building not only a new band, but a new brand. Do you have to sort of get an album out consistently? Like, w what's the game plan these days? Because it's not like 1985 no, where it's, not. here's a million dollars and off yeah, you go. Yeah, exactly. No, at all. I think don't... it's a matter of getting things, getting what you can out there as much as possible. Yeah. yeah. And, and getting out, hey, listen, I, I'm going to say the thing that we're doing right now feels to me like it's the best thing that this band has done. We've gotten on a great tour. Right. And we've seen it. We're out with Disturbed, Breaking right. Benjamin, Aldrich. Granted, we're first, but you know what? There's people there. They get to see us, and you see the response. You know what I mean? And you see that it works. And, uh, you know, listen, we did a headlining tour, and yeah, you can go play to four or 500 people, and that's great, and those are your fans. But be able to get in front of people that you well, know, you don't know fans. who that's you are. Thing. Mm -hmm. You got to build it so you know we can make this. So we can actually. I mean, it's expensive to go on the road. That's and we pay for all of it. So really, the bottom line is, is you have to be able to support that. And the only way you can do that is by having fans that come and support what you do. Exactly. So you know, and uh, listen, that's how. Granted, it was I don't know twenty, you know, eighteen years or whatever. Stain when we started, but I mean that's how we did it. We had a lot of great tours that we got on opening for a lot of great bands that allowed us to create our fan base and you know mm -hmm. and build what we were and so that's what i know is you go out and you work yeah so, so and, yeah go yeah. ahead well I was just, yeah people don't they really don't know the name saint Sonia for the most part i mean yeah. it's, slowly yes people right. are starting to know it but yeah it's it's all about you know the brand it. Yeah, brand i mean there's band and brand and it's it's yeah. It's True. complicated, and we'll finish on this, you know, listen, I've been in the media tent all day doing interviews all day, and then I heard you guys playing, and I had to run out, because it is a spectacular sounding live band. There's oh, thank you, no man. questions about that. Oh, thanks. How important is live band and live music to getting the band out there and the brand out there? I mean, you can't just sort of sit, put a single on radio and stay at home. Well, I mean, and listen, I mean, in today's day and age, I mean, anybody can sit in their bedroom and, you know, cut what they did to a grid and try and make it sound good and you know right. uh you know and, fix and your vocals and you know you can make it sound good. Yeah. Band yeah. Heroes. you know what i'm saying yeah, exactly, but i mean yeah. what translates is that we've we've all done this we've all been in other bands this isn't our first rodeo and it's it's you know proofs in the pudding you have to be able to do it and do it in a live setting yeah. and uh you know i uh, you know, are there a couple of things that we run on an iPod that kind of are fillers? Yeah, there is on some songs, but you know what? We don't need it. We didn't have it today. Right. Went down, didn't work. You know what? Doesn't matter. Yeah. We're not running to a Pro Tools rig. They're on all these vocals and other guitars <laughs> and all this stuff. It's four guys playing music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the way and it that's should all be. It is. And it is, and that's really the way it is. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of, I mean, I've literally been on tour with bands and like, oh, wow, those guys are, Oh wait, that's a Pro Tools rig oh, running. Yeah. Well, that's I gotta tell you, I was at a show at this park last week, and I was at Soundcheck, and the person on stage goes, "Can I have less computer in the monitor?" And I was like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that was a pop thing, you yeah, know what I mean? And, but now it's yeah. really worked its way into oh yeah, into you know, everything. I mean, a lot. I, mean, I think you, people I would be surprised it to an extent. I mean, but you know, there's there's a little there's. There's something that can help you, and then there's something when you, put, when you come to rely on it, that's when it becomes yeah, a problem. Exactly. Yeah. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. When you're running 23 tapes and nothing else. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of fans would be, would be well, probably be sadly 
sadly disappointed to know how many, you know, how, I don't know how, how many tracks and how many, how much of the show uh, right. or the sound but sonically on stage when a band plays live is fake. You know, I think a lot of people would be well, very like 99 bands out of 100 are running some kind of t tape. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And uh, yeah. hey, there you go. That's the cool thing about metal. Most of them probably aren't, you know metal what I mean? Is, they kind of go real. out. Yeah, you keep it real, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank of you. course. Thank you, Absolute man. Pleasure. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. That thank was you, absolutely sir. great.